Welcome to the feature interview here on Emory and Henry Reports on EHC TV. Today we have John Soares on the set. John is from Johnson City and WJHL TV. Thank you for coming on. You're welcome. Talk about your station and what you guys have going on down there. That's a pretty broad question. How much time do you have? We'll start with a minute and we'll go from there. Okay. Um, well, I am new to uh, WJHL and to Johnson City, moving here from Santa Barbara about six months ago. And um, we have a very dynamic uh, crew of reporters, anchors, producers that um, work very hard on uh, informing not only Tri-Cities but uh, throughout our, uh, our market, uh, Southwest Virginia and, um, and into um, western parts of our region uh, at, to the very latest on news and information on a multiple array of platforms. Now TV was not your original career. Did you come from law? I was originally a stonemason okay. and grew up um, as a stonemason's son and learned how to be a, uh, a stonemason. Went to college, worked my way through college doing that, uh, worked construction uh, up until uh, I went to grad school for journalism, then decided I had $90,000 burning a hole in my pocket and throw that at law school. Got out of that, went into teaching. And out of teaching, I, was still, I still stayed active in broadcast and worked simultaneously at a NBC and CBS station in, uh, back on the central coast of California and decided I loved being in a newsroom more than I did in a classroom and came into here. So that's my resume. There you go. What is it about the newsroom that appeals to you more than any other career? Oh, wow. Um, it's changing, the dynamic, uh, the professionals that you have in the room, um, breaking news, um, the camaraderie that you have in the midst of what looks like chaos behind the scenes and making it all look good in, in front of the camera. Uh, I, I couldn't even begin to list which one was the most important. It's just that the, all the confluence of values and, and uh, ideas that come together really make it a dynamic place each and every day. When you're watching TV and you see news, a lot of times you find out what bad things are going on in the world. What makes something newsworthy? I, I'd have to take exception to classifying that as anything as a bad thing because that's pretty subjective in terms of who would take something as bad, who would take something as good. Uh, my job is not to, and the job of JHL is not to put a value on whether something is bad or something is good. Uh, rather, I, I like to look at news and, and the job of a news station as being a mirror. What we're doing is reflecting what's going on in the community. Uh, we, get to, we get the privilege of making the editorial decisions uh, to decide whether something is of, new, of value that should be reflected back to the community. And then ultimately it's up to the community to decide whether these are stories that are important to them and how they interpret those stories. It's, I, wish, I wish it was an exact science. It's not. Uh, but again, uh, I think what we do is we're more of a, a community mirror and, and in some respects a historian for the community, giving them what I hope uh, day in and day out is the news that they need, that our viewers need. And if it's not, they let us know and we adjust our, um, our coverage accordingly. What parameters do you have to decide what news is something that they need? Wow, that's a big word, parameters. Let me <laughs> see. Um, what parameters? Gee, it's, um, I mean, some of the stuff is that we do is news of the day. Uh, the, some, a lot of what we do is um, we work to be the uh, a viewer's advocate. Um, we want to make sure that uh, our viewers know that we have their back, that, um, that we're watching out for them. So if we see governmental waste, let's say, or we see something that, that goes beyond the pale of, of making sense that you know, we're always out there with a healthy skepticism towards conventional wisdom, and we question the status quo. That's our job. That's what we're supposed to do. Because people, by and large, they don't have time to do this themselves. I mean, uh, Internet and Facebook aside, you know, people are living their lives, going out, working, uh, raising families, other pursuits, going to college, and um, they don't have time to keep their eye on what's going on in the community, and that's our job. So in terms of parameters, I think first and foremost, I, I put my news director hat aside, if you will, and, and, and watch our news as a viewer. And in the end of the day, is the story that I'm doing, is the story that the station doing, not only important just 
to a specific region, Johnson City, Bristol, or Kingsport, but is it, does, does it cut across all communities? So if someone, if you're here in Emory and you're watching our, our air, does it make sense to you? Do you learn something from it? To me, that's, that's the challenge, is being able to cut across um, any sort of county lines or city lines, or whatever, so that it's applicable throughout. You mentioned having a healthy skepticism. What purpose, what value is the media as a watchdog? How important is the news industry for America? Well, I mean, Thomas Jefferson said, um, if, if I had the choice between um, a strong government and a weak media or a strong media and a weak government, um, I, take the, I take the latter. I mean, he, for, for we're empowered by the Constitution. Um, as, as vanguards of the First Amendment, that um, you know, we're, te we're protecting the people's rights to free press, uh, right to free speech, and inherently um, the right to know, even though it's not codified in the Constitution. But we do have that privilege, and it's a privilege. I mean, you're all college students, you're going to be getting out of here, and I don't think there's anything more empowering, more invigorating in life to be a 20-something year old and getting to be a media practitioner and telling people what to think about, not what to think. It's not a causal connection between what I'm doing as a news director, what types of programs we're putting out there, and what people are thinking. But it gives them, to, it gives them an opportunity to say, this is topical. Whether you talk about this at the water cooler, around the dinner table, with your friends and colleagues, but you get to really understand what it is that we do based upon consistency, based upon day in and day out, what's that conventional wisdom, because conventional wisdom shifts. I mean, cultures shift, social mores shift, and we're always looking, and you know, with, with social media, we use that more than ever before now to get an idea as to what people want, what types of stories are they looking to, for us to cover, and um, and from there, um, it's make sure we get it done by by five o'clock or by six o'clock or by eleven o'clock. We are, we're always racing the clock too. Yes, sir. Well, unfortunately, we're running out of time. We want to thank you for coming on the set. Thank you. I I should speak in more sound bites, but that's why I do what I do, and I don't go on TV. I get behind the scenes. Well, we appreciate it and you can okay. tune in to WJHL broadcast from Johnson City. We've heard many times before that you should currently be yourself when you're acting around the opposite sex. Kate Sigety has a short video demonstrating that that might be the most effective tactic for boy meets girl. <laughs> 